Welcome into Box Office Quarterbacks. I am joined once again by my good friend Eric Onyashefile, uh, doing what we love to do best, talking about the MCU and the latest MCU installment, Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, before I toss it over to Eric, I'm just going to say that you were completely right, Eric. This is the pellet cleanser that we were expecting, and you called this months ago. So, um, yeah, I I love this movie, and I want to see your take on it as well. Yeah, um, we, de- we definitely were expecting um, a comedy, especially off the heels of Thor Ragnarok. Um, it, it was that pellet cleanser that I was expecting following whatever was going to happen in um, so um, it, it gives us a, a nice little reset because we all know what's coming next. I was talking to my girlfriend about this. I was like, you know what the next movie is, right? And she was like, no. And I was like, uh, it's Black Panther 2. So this one, it, it, it's a good movie to hold us through September, October, and when Black Panther 2 comes out in November. So, uh, Michael White TV did, did this thing again. He, he gets all the credit for rejuvenating the character of Thor. Well, I, we'll get into the movie as we go on, but um, that's pretty much the same essence from Thor 3. Ratchet it up times 10, maybe a little bit too much in some parts, but at the end of the day, if you are a fan of the MCU and you knew um, coming after Thor 3, especially now with like in this one in Thor 4, you knew that you were going to get a comedy. So it, it's more along the lines of just enjoying the theater experience. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I would say this is one of my most enjoyable theater experiences this year. And like the whole audience was just laughing and dying the entire time with some of these jokes. I, I think they did go a little overboard on them, especially like some of the more serious stuff with Jane Foster. Uh, but it was enjoyable throughout the, the two hour ride. It wasn't long. It really kept your attention the entire time. I think I enjoyed this movie more than Ragnarok because Ragnarok was the first time you're introduced to a Thor with this kind of uh, vibe going into it where it's funny and hilarious and colorful and all this. So I was used to what I was going to see this time around. So I think I enjoyed it a little bit more. Um, yeah, this is full on Taika Watiti at his craziest. Um, it is definitely a comedy. Um, there are some, you know, great returning characters in here. Uh, Eric, I know you love Jane Foster uh, a lot. And I really thought her story throughout this movie was one of the best parts of it. Oh, for that 1000%. And honestly, that's a testament to. Uh, in this case, the writing aspect, because I was more invested in Jane Foster coming and Natalie Portman coming back, uh, especially after I think I read an article by Vulture. I might be getting the, the credit wrong, but um, they said that uh, she, this was her first time in the MCU in nine years. Um, she left after Thor The Dark World because I guess Patty Jenkins was supposed to direct that movie. But they let her go, which upset um, Natalie Portman. So she was just like, I'm done with the MCU. But she came back. And I was more invested in her character than anything Thor did. So, I mean, I think that's, I, I, I appreciate that from the writers. Because, I mean, we this is the fourth time we've seen Thor in a movie. Plus the times that we've seen him in other um, properties. And I was more invested in in jane foster yeah me too uh this is my favorite jane appearance by far uh i also like that they did bring back uh briefly two of the main characters from the first thor movies which is darcy and uh, dr selvig because i mean we saw darcy in wandavision but those two characters kind of fell off the face of the earth. We just never saw them again. So it was good to tie in the first two Thor movies, uh, despite what everyone thought about them. I thought King Valkyrie was great in this movie as well. Uh, I loved Gore, the God Butcher, a lot. Christian Bale was fantastic and scary. 
and everything you wanted in an MCU villain. I think the only criticism I have with that appearance is we didn't see Gore doing so much God butchering in this movie after the first scene. That would be one of my criticisms. Yeah, yeah, we did. A lot of it was done off camera, um, which which is kind of uh, kind of whack to me. Um, I would have liked to see like more. Yeah, like you said, like Gore actually killing some of the gods and um, in, in the trailers and previews. Um, I thought that that's what we were going to be getting. But um, again, I think it was more along the lines of they wanted to give Jane her story and her art as much room to breathe as possible. And so, I mean, I'm not mad at that decision if that's the way they were thinking. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed Gore. I enjoyed Christian Bale's um, portrayal of Gore the God Butcher. Uh, I know some people are saying it's one of the best villains in the MCU. I I, I wouldn't go that far, but um, I mean, Christian Bale did his thing. He's a phenomenal actor. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. I would never expect him to be a villain in the MCU, so I, he did his thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, I think we should transition into scenes, though, Eric. And <laughs> this movie's such a wild ride. I'm, I'm gonna have to think of what my favorite scenes are. Um, off the top of my head, I loved like the first fifteen minutes of this movie, where, um, you, you know, we're with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and we're on that world where. Thor was like, you know, this is going to be a peaceful transition or a peaceful trip for us. And he's like meditating on a mountain and he rides Stormbreaker like a broom, yeah. um, like a witch on a broom. I thought that was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, there's so many to pick from. Oh, yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite ones was I hate going to the final battle because, I mean, that's kind of they did a good job in that third act final battle scene. Um, I like Thor. I also realized Thor is if Marvel wanted to overpower Thor, they could possibly do it because I never knew he had the ability to give people the the power of Thor, whether it be for a short time. Um, I enjoyed Jane coming back to save Thor when Thor let her know, like, hey, you can't do this anymore because if so, this the last time you wield the hammer will be will be it for you. And I, I think that that final fight scene was my favorite. Yeah, that was good. Um, the little kid with the like stuffed bunny or whatever firing yeah. <laughs> like lightning bolts at Gore, I thought was hilarious. Uh, yeah, I honestly did not think Jane Foster was going to die in this movie. Me, and see, that was crazy. Uh, yeah, like what's crazy is that like we always tend to say like, oh, Marvel can. Like they always want to go all the way, but I, they're, we're, we're afraid that they're afraid to actually go all the way. Like, how, like when we look at something like the Multiverse of Madness, like there were so many things. Like, yeah, it was technically a horror movie, but there were horror elements. But it wasn't a horror movie, so it's like if you were gonna do horror, just do it. Like, I felt, I felt here, like okay, they're gonna kill. Like, oh, th th they would kill off Jane Foster, but I'm afraid that they won't do it. So when they actually did it, I was like, see, like, that makes the movie so much, like, not saying that you need death to make a movie better, but, like, it it helps the storytelling aspect. And I, I, I was surprised that they actually did it, but, uh, like, my girlfriend was telling me, she was just like, oh, she could tell that they were going to do it because of the Guns and Roses song at the end that they chose. So I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't realize that but she caught that. And I was like, oh, all right. So they were this. That's what makes the, the storytelling in the movie better is that they went for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and honestly, like what you brought up with Natalie Portman earlier, where she wanted to be done with the MCU, I think that factored into this a little like, hey, I'll come back for this one movie and we're going to go all out. And I'm going to become the mighty Thor and we're going to do this big, but this will be my final movie. So I think maybe that happened behind the scenes and that's why we got this. But I would have loved Jane to, to live on. Honestly, I thought she became very compelling in this movie and my favorite Jane performance, like I said earlier. So um, I thought 
like Thor was going to die in this movie, to be honest with you. I thought, you, you know, he would have sacrificed himself and Gore would have killed him at the end. But uh, it's a twist I didn't see coming for sure. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, just going on that final battle scene and everything that happened when they go into that dimension and Gore makes that one wish and it's when Jane dies and Gore's daughter is brought back to life. I thought that was a beautiful scene. Uh, honestly, uh, it reminded me kind of of the soul stone scene in infinity war, but like a more like angelic setting. I really like that whole thing. And the ending, when you find out who, uh, love and thunder are, uh, God, and it's Chris Hemsworth's real daughter, so yeah. it really just hits you in the heart too. So I really love that whole sequence as well. So yeah, that like I I I, I checked like the social media reaction after, and um, it was pointed out that not only was Chris Hemsworth's daughter in it, which uh, Chris Hemsworth's daughter who was Gore the God Butcher's uh, daughter in the movie, but Taika Waititi's kid and Christian Bale's kid were one of the kids at the end that got that was captured and then it was given the powers of Thor. So I'm like, oh, well, wow. like knowing that now it makes some of these scenes better. Um, like I didn't realize that that was Thor's kid at the end until uh, Chris Helmsworth's daughter at the end until after the movie. And I was like, oh, that that makes the scene a hundred times better. And I, I they did a, a, a good job with it. At, like it took a it took a a little bit to get to the end, but when they got to the end, they made it count. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, uh, this movie is almost like a family movie when you subtract all the stuff that Zeus says and everything that comes <laughs> out of his mouth. But, uh, it's really a relationship between Thor and Thor becoming a dad essentially. And I like that part of it. His purpose in this life now is to raise this little girl. And I think that was a very sweet uh, message at, at the end of this movie. Speaking of the zoo scene, I thought it was, I thought it was funny. I thought it was a little weird. Uh, Russell Crowe definitely took some liberties with some oh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. The accent was weird. Um, like when he's met, like talking, he's like, Oh, so first order of business, when is the orgy? I lost it in theaters. Oh my God. And there's like this little God guy, like telling them to shut up. Cause he wanted to know this information too. <laughs> I, I, that scene was funny, but I thought it went on too long. Oh yeah, it definitely went on too long. And it was good to see. I, it was all, all, it's always nice to see like other gods and like other beings and other dimensions. Like that's a good job. Like Marvel has been doing so far is that they've been expanding this. They said they were going to expand the world and they have been expanding. We've seen whether it's in Loki, the TVA, what, whether it's in Moon Knight and we see everything, all the different, um, the different gods there. We see now in Thor, Love and Thunder, with the different gods that people are uh, um, try. I pray to whether the the one that's the dumpling god. I was I was <laughs> dying at that one. The, the god that Cord prays to, um, the god of magic and things like that. And I was like, that see, Marvel is again. That's another a feather in the cap of them. They're expanding. They told us they're going to expand this world, and they are doing that. So that that was interesting to see. But like you said, that scene went on way too long. Like. The one shocking thing for me in that scene, oh, well, not shocking, but surprising thing for me was that Thor was the one to kill Zeus. I thought Gore was going to come in and just lay waste to everybody, but yeah. that didn't happen. And it was actually Thor that that dealt a, a severe blow to Zeus, so he could take the. Oh, oh we get. I don't want to spoil it if we're getting into spoilers. Oh, we're we're all in. We're, we're all in, in we're right in, now, in, buddy. In, in, now, if you guys want a spoiler warning, please uh, sponsor this show. So. You know, yes, so we can you know take out ad time for that spoiler warning. But um, Dunkin' yeah. Donuts right yeah. <laughs> here. I got you. I got you. Yeah. But um, yeah. When they took the thunderbolt, I thought yeah, Gore was gonna come in and lay waste to all the gods. But it was actually Thor that that um, dealt that blow to Zeus. Um, but yeah, again, that scene took way too long. Russell Crowe's accent was I don't know. There's some bad accents in 
in um in the MCU. Um, Black Panther is one of my top five movies, but their accents are terrible. And <laughs> this what Zeus's accent was pretty bad. And I was just like, ah, let's let's hurry, let's move this on. But um, Zeus be uh, we we get a we get a glimpse of what's to come, I guess later down the road in the movie but uh for that scene yeah nah, they could have shaved like 10 15 minutes off that oh yeah showed more I, gore killing yeah if gore like laid siege to that whole temple i thought it would have made the movie a little bit stronger and like made gore more of a threat instead of just you know having him kill the gods off screen yeah. but that leads us into the post credit scene. I think we'll just talk about it now because I was super pumped, not just because they introduced the character of Hercules, but who is playing Hercules, <laughs> which is, uh, who is it? Brett Goldstein or whatever from Ted Lasso. Yeah, I'm like, like he, he was talking to somebody and I was like, yo, who is he talking? Like, I didn't think that they were going to show like Hercules. I thought they were going to pull uh, Eternals. Like, oh, you'll hear Blade screen, you'll hear Blade's voice off screen. I thought he would mention, oh, Hercules. And then we'll just like see him like walk in like his feet or something. But we did it. I thought, but yeah, the show, to show Brett and to show that like he's playing Hercules out, that was a literal like, oh, snap moment for me in the theater. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, But another surprising thing to me was at the end was that, the cre- when the credits started, when the credits were done rolling, we got that message, Thor will return. And I'm like, how many Thor movies are they, how many Thor movies are they gonna do? Like <laughs> like that's like Thor's the only one of the OG Avengers to get four movies. So I'm like and Chris Hemsworth said that, I mean, this role is making him the most money. Like he's gonna continue to do it. And I'm like, he's thirty eight, jacked as hell. So he could continue to do it possibly, but like, do you want to keep doing it? Well, now, now he has his daughter in there, and I yeah. think his son was in a scene. So this is like a family affair now. I guess so. Uh, keep it going. I guess so. And I'm just like, man, like I thought that they would really try to phase away from the Avengers that we knew, but we still, we're, I guess we're still going to see Thor. We're going to see Bruce Banner in a couple weeks. For She Hulk, so they might be the only two holdovers. So I guess, but yeah, I was surprised to for them to actually come out and say Thor will return. Now, depending on what Thor we get, whether it's the Chris Hemsworth Thor, whether it's Beta Ray Bill, who knows? But I, a Thor will be here. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. I kind of like having an OG out there. It's like having. You know, like a like a veteran, like a I don't know, not Jordan on the Wizards. I don't want to say that, but like having a real recognizable name out there with the new uh, group, and I I dig that. So um, if he wants to come back for everything, put him in. Um, but obviously, I think Thor is going to be my favorite character. But I think we should go into favorite characters, uh, Eric. I'm going to let you run down your top five before I get to mine. Oh, yeah. Top five. Easy. Um, I'm going to go one. Jane Foster was one for me. Um, Again, just seeing her story. um, They took it straight from the comics. I thought that they would deviate and do something else, but they took, uh, took it straight from the comics. Just seeing how everything, how her cancer was affecting her, when she wasn't the mighty Thor, it was it tugged at the heartstrings? I'm not even gonna lie, it tugged at the heartstrings. And like I like we like I said earlier, like I was more invested in her arc than I was in anything Thor was doing. So that easy, but because of that, she's my number one. Number two, I'm gonna go Valkyrie, King Valkyrie. They could have done so much more with her, but um. They showed her as king. They showed her doing the, the Old Spice commercials. They showed yeah. um, what they showed everything about. And, like, I liked her presence, Tessa Thompson, every time she came on the screen. Uh, again, they could have done more. Three, I'm going to go Axel Heimdall's son. Um, we saw him in the beginning. 
I learned how to use his um, all-seeing powers, and then be turn. And and once Thor gave him uh, the powers of Thor, we saw him start, you know, laying waste to everybody. For I'm a go Gore the God Butcher because we touched on Christian Bale. Uh, he did his thing. Uh, nothing needs to be said there. And then five, I'm going to go Thor. If there's one thing, though, I wish we learned more. Uh, just going back to uh, Jay Foster real quick. Um, you mentioned we saw Darcy in WandaVision. We saw Selvig actually in Ult Ultron. But then I, I swear, like, I don't know if we saw him in Ragnarok. I don't think we did. I don't but, think so. Yeah, I yeah. think it was, yeah, it was Ult Age of Ultron that we saw him last. But, um, but I, I wish we figured out, like, as much as I, I, I want to move away from Thanos and Endgame and everything, I wish we found, like, had a reason for why um, Jane developed cancer, whether if it was the blip and then she came back and that's what happened. Like, I, I guess an answer for that would have happened, but uh, that that's just me being nitpicky. But, um, yeah, those are, those, those are my five favorite characters in this movie. So what about you? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go Thor number one just because he consistently made me laugh this entire movie. And I love when Chris Hemsworth gets to do stuff like this. Two is going to be Jane. Um, like her performance, especially with the more serious things, I thought was great. I love that they threw in a New Mexico line there saying that she's just this cool astrophysicist from New Mexico. I love so you talking like, about when she said that. I was like, oh, Jeff is probably somewhere smart. Yeah. I'm like, we got an Avenger in our state, too, now. So that's cool. So uh, I love Jane. I love Valkyrie. I want Infinity Cones to be a real-life place, and I'll go oh, yeah. there all the time. Um, four, I'm going to do Gore, the God Butcher. Um, and five, I'm going to go off the wall and say Stormbreaker, which is uh. <laughs> it's just so hilarious. Like, they, they play him up to be, like, uh, like this jealous thing. And then he's just like sneaking around a corner every time Thor mentions millionaire. And uh, it's, it's hilarious. I love all those scenes. So that'll be my top five. And what, what would you say could have been better about the movie? I would say, you know, cut out 15% of the jokes, maybe not even that much, maybe even 10% of the jokes. I think it would be better, especially when you're, you know, dealing with Jane and the cancer stuff. I think that's when you really needed this movie to really take a breath and think about the seriousness of the situation and then give Gore some more scenes because he's great in the scenes that he did get, but he disappears for a big chunk of this movie, especially when they go visit Zeus. So that would be what I would do better. Yeah. I, I, I tend to agree because yeah, like, like you said, like we knew, after Ragnarok, we, what we were getting, but this seems like Taika Waititi took it and then took it up ten notches. But it's like you know, you know, dial it back a little bit. We like we get it. We know you want to be funny, but when we can also tell when you're trying too hard to be funny. So it's just like it, it's it's probably gonna hit the same anyway if you just just chill and like let whatever you want to say breathe. But um, yeah. Easy, 10% 10, 10 of the jokes, 15% of the jokes could have been cut out. Um, yeah, and definitely more. I, I would have liked to see more gore just to have an under Like when you get named Gore the God Butcher, I want to see gods get butchered. Yeah. So, like that's something that like I would have liked to see. Like, oh, okay, like dang. Like, like I like these superheroes that we want to root for actually like get pushed to the limit. So it's like, I, I didn't think at any time Thor got pushed to the limit. So I, 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 I think making Gore more formidable, whether it's being in more scenes, showing more, showing him, you know, butcher more gods probably would have helped. But um, besides that, like those are my, my two main things, especially just watching the movie last night. Pro more will definitely come to me, but uh, right now those stand out the most. Yeah, uh, this movie's solid, though. And now, you know, we're getting to our our final ratings here. 
I would say this movie is an all star for me. I had I had a great time with it. Like I laughed throughout this entire movie. The whole theater was cracking up. Uh, my wife said this is like the most enjoyable movie she's seen this year in theaters. It's it's a great time. I don't know how rewatchable it is just because it's like a comedy movie. You you can't really rewatch them a lot because you know what jokes are coming. I think I would watch this maybe once every few years or something like that. It did make me want to read the Gore the God Butcher run in the comics. So that's that's a thing. Uh, that the other Thor movies didn't um, really inspire me to do. But yeah, solid all-star for me, I say. You should go see it in theaters. Yeah, I'm going to give it a starter. Um, I'm going to give it a starter. It is, it, we'll get into the rankings of uh, Phase 4 MCU movies, but it, it did its thing. Um, again, it, we knew going in it was a comedy. We knew... We knew... Um, uh, this is the fourth Thor movie. Again, mention again. No other OG Avenger has has had had gotten four. So we knew what it, it was. The um, Jane's story and Jane's art clearly was the best part for me. Um, again, if you if you're named Gore the God Butcher, I want to see some gods get butchered. <laughs> yeah, um, we didn't see too much of that, and I, just the amount of just the amount of jokes. It's like, I get it. Man. Like you're, you're trying to be funny. Like nobody likes someone who is trying to be funny. Like, yeah. Like, like I get it, but there were some jokes in there that were funny, but then I guess just the amount of it kind of hampered it a little bit. But um, again, solid starter, um, nice palate cleanser for the MCU. Got, um, it finally felt like a movie where we're we're getting um, glimpses into the future. I liked the the first post credit tease. The second post credit scene was very fitting for Jane. She got into Valhalla, was met by Heimdall. Um, so who knows where that's gonna go? Um, let's get to see it yourself again on screen. Um, but yeah, started for me. Yeah, the, re- the rewatchability. I think. Once it's out on Disney Plus, I'll probably watch it that first weekend, and then um, it, it'll. But I, I, I think it has some rewatchability. Um, but uh, yeah, started. Yeah, um, it's probably my second favorite um, Marvel thing this year after Moon Knight, I would say. But when we're looking at the grand scheme of the the cinematic uh, Phase Four rankings and just like the movies of the whole thing. I would say Spider-Man No Way Home is still going to be hard to top. That movie was just an experience uh, as close to an end game experience as we have gotten in the past few years. So that's going to be my one. I think this is two. Uh, Shang-Chi was great. And that's number three, four for me. Um, Eternals wasn't bad as, no, every, as everyone no, said. No, it wasn't like I rewatched Eternals uh, like, last weekend and i'm like wait a minute this movie was kind of good like yeah the visual like the vis, like the eternals visuals is the best visuals in the mcu like it it was like just rewatching it like i was like wait a minute this is not that bad like yeah is it overly long maybe it doesn't get the credit like it should be higher on this ranking it, it's that That'll be like four and five with Multiverse of Madness, which I think can switch whatever weekend I feel like switching them, I guess. But and then six, obviously, is Black Widow. And you can listen to our past episodes on my thoughts on that. Uh, So, yeah, for me, um, like I have this this love hate relationship with Spider-Man. Like I love Spider-Man. like He's my favorite superhero. I loved No Way Home in theaters. But. I haven't watched it since. So it's like, I don't know why I haven't watched No Way Home outside of the theater. But um, for some reason, I, I, I don't know why I, I, I haven't. So for that, we're ranking phase four movies. Shang-Chi is one for me. Nice. I'll go Spider-Man No Way Home 2. 
Eternals 3. This one four, Doctor Strange five, Black Widow six. Yeah, that, it's close. Like this is the closest phase, I think, as far as like yeah. the quality of the movies. Um, I still don't know where we're headed. I really don't. I, I'm true. guessing it's Secret Wars, but I hope we get more clarity, and I hope wow. we get a Black Panther two. <laughs> Trailer uh, soon. Yeah. Um, I think they said, what, Comic-Con is the 21st? Yeah. And that uh, Marvel's going to have... So I think that's when they'll like show like Ant-Man. They'll show... They obviously have to show something from Black Panther because... Yeah. Every time you tra- search it on like Twitter, it's almost like doom and gloom. Like, yeah. oh no, what's going to happen? And it's like, they've been noticeably quiet about this. And it's just like... I don't know. Like I, they have, they they gotta show something. At, yeah. Um, um, but because obviously it's up next, so this is something they could have waited on, but they decided not to. So yeah. So yeah, but um, I think we'll like. That's the thing. Like when when the first ten years of Infinity of uh, the Infinity Saga. We were invested because we knew what was coming. Like here, they're dropping hints, whether it's in Doctor Strange 2, about like the incursions, which ties into Secret Wars and things like that. But it's, it hasn't felt like all the movies are pointing towards that. It's just like everything is in its different direction. And then especially with the Disney Plus shows, it feels like, okay, it's not all going in one direction or it's not like it's not all the shows are going in one direction and all the movies are going in one direction it's just everything just scattered all over like a whiteboard yeah but, um, I, I think they have to start you know figuring out like how to rein some of this stuff in and so like as fans when we go to these the go to these movies we have an understanding of like okay what's coming yeah but, um like, like, like put it, Kang, put Kang at the yeah, end of like, Black Panther 2 or something. Like, yeah, just give me just, something. Like, yeah, if like Kang popped up at the end of this movie, you're like, oh, okay, finally we get some clarity. But then, like, where Ant-Man and the Wasp, Kang is the villain. And it's just like, okay, but he's also the villain in Loki 2. And is he the overarching villain? Like, like what else is going on? But, yeah, I think we'll start to get more clarity. And then I think once we do, we'll go back and see some of these movies differently. Yeah. Like, and I think once we get more clarity, movies like The Eternals, movies like Multiverse of Madness will make more sense and be more crucial. Um, Just like how, like, when Phase 4 started, especially with WandaVision and then, um, like, shows like What If, like, it made Age of Ultron feel more like yep. more ne- uh, more of a necessity. So I think that's kind of what's going to happen. And I mean, I'm I, like, I mean, once we get those answers, those movies will feel more important. Yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, time will tell with this. We got to see the whole phase before we really judge it at the end. Um but I'm excited for what's next. I'm excited to talk about Miss Marvel uh, in the finale that's coming up in a few weeks. And then we got She-Hulk. We got a lot of stuff coming, Eric. But um, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? I want to say um, we're going to look at these first weekend box office numbers when it comes. And um, whoever told you that there's an MCU fatigue, uh, they're lying. So <laughs> I- I'm going to tell you right yep. now, the-, the theater I was in, to watch Thor Love and Thunder last night was packed. So uh, they got a chokehold on on pop culture right now, and they're not letting it go. Honestly, like, I get it. When people talk about Star Wars and everything like that, this is my Star Wars. So yeah, yeah this, is, this is not going anywhere. Keep them coming. I'll watch MCU movies until I'm 80 years old. Yeah, I'm pretty old, sure. And then happened. we're on like our 10th Thor by that point. <laughs> yeah, so keep yeah. them coming. And box office quarterbacks will have been 
uh, sponsored by by who knows we, Dunkin Donuts. We're calling we'll be, you out. Sponsor we'll, us right now. We'll be eighty years old, swimming in retirement money dough. <laughs> That's that's our plan. Um, but yeah, thanks, Eric, for for uh, jumping on today. And uh, we'll be back to talk about Miss Marvel, all this stuff. Check out our website, boxofficeqbs.com to um, see all our past episodes. Until then, I am Jeffrey Gordon. He's Eric Anya Sheffield. We will talk to you guys very, very soon.